definitely ready for lunch. Welcome to our 30th episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time for five minutes only from Massachusetts. My name is Hayden. And I'm Anton. And Hayden, I, I'm amazed it's our 30th, 30th episode. It looks to me, I noticed uh, a week or two ago that you were wearing uh, headphones. You must have gotten a, a bigger budget than me for this show. I thought this was our low budget offering in the In Some Cinematic Universe. I got a huge pay raise to coincide with my... I'm joking. <laughs> this is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's probably obvious that um, we, we are the low budget uh, in some cinematic universe offering and at only five minutes you get what you pay for. Um, and I think that may be true of today's tip. Uh, I, it's something that actually is near and dear to my heart and I'm going to jump right in and, and get going on it. But um, So when you're ready, Anton, I'm, uh, I will share your screen. Okay. Um, well, of course. Uh, so I, I can tell. I, yeah, excellent. Yes. I am ready now. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off the timer. We're going to get people out of here in five minutes. It's a beautiful day here. I want to get out biking. And so let's make this happen. Um, so this really is something that I've struggled with over the years um, with uh, Apex. And that's making sure that I can get conditional edit links. This is a single interactive report. And depending on my role, I can either edit clients or I can edit employees. So if I'm a sales rep, I can edit employees. If I'm a manager, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. If I'm a sales rep, I can edit clients. If I'm a manager, I can edit employees. And it's pretty easy to change the label. Um, but what I used, what used to happen with uh, with Apex was if you just got rid of the the link, the the label, if you right clicked on it, you could inspect, and the actual link would still be in there. And that was a, potentially a huge problem because right. just yeah, yeah. You, you can't rely on CSS to enforce your security. For sure. So I wanted to make sure that that link just never made it back to the browser. Um, and, and so what I've done in the past, and I'm going to go ahead and show you, is I build the link myself. Um, and this particular query is maybe a little bit complicated, but it depends on a couple of things. And really, essentially, if, if I'm allowed so, so, to edit. So what I see here, just to um, uh, make sure that we're all on the same page, uh, the, the challenge is that you have two tables, one for clients, one for employees, uh, and you want to show them all in the same report. If it's sort of two different reports, there'd be no problem. But because it's all in the same report and because different people have different access levels, you need to have a that's, more complicated solution. That's exactly right. And yeah. so, so there is a clear there there's been a declarative way to be able to get the right things in there but the problem was i needed to, if if they didn't have access to anything i needed that link to not go back to the page so what i've done is used apex get url um, and i use it i build the link myself manually and if i take a look at the link um, here when i do the link i have just a standard url and the link um, and then what i show here as display class, um, that is, you know, the 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 display that I built up to say either, um, you know, either it's going to be edit or it's going to be null. Um, but again, my point here is just making this edit or null isn't enough. You have to make sure that for sure the link doesn't come back to the page, and that's why I switched to using Apex Get URL um, for this this scenario. I don't like it though. The thing I don't like about it is it's not declarative. I've I've lost the ability to do something declarative here. Um, right. It, oh, it, it, is, no. it, it is nonetheless like pretty user friendly um, in that uh, I, I think in, in invoking the API is like pretty easy to read. I, I agree with you that the context switch is not ideal. Yeah, that's the, the PL SQL context switch really, from a per performance perspective, this happens, this context switch happens for every row. Um, so I'd like to be able to avoid that if possible. But uh, so, so maybe there's an opportunity to build the um, link more declaratively. So uh, how about as point counterpoint, Anton, I share my screen. All right. Let's see what you got. Excellent. So now we see my screen. And I've <laughs> styled it differently for uh, the benefit of audience of narrative clarity. So same report, um, depending on who, what your role is, uh, you have access to different links. So uh, the, the end result is the same. I have implemented it slightly differently to address 
the concern that you had, Anton, over uh, uh, context switching. So as everyone can see, my query is more or less identical with some small changes. So um, instead of uh, invoking Apex uh, uh, URL, uh, Apex get URL, um, I'm instead building the components that I would then pass into the URL. So I have, um, I've identified the destination page, which is just the number of the page, mm -hmm. um, and the primary key on said page. And then uh, redundantly, uh, because uh, if you don't have the, uh, the right authorization, uh, you're, you're passed in a harmless value for these, uh, for these oh, former uh, uh, columns. Uh, but then e even though the, the link is ultimately harmless, I then further add a display class to hide it in the event of um, the authorizations not being met. So what that looks like declaratively is um, in the attribute for my link, I am in passing in as the page value, the destination page, as the primary key, which, so this would normally be P6ID. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now referencing the, uh, the column in my query and I'm passing in the requisite ID. Oh, oh. oh and that's, that's it for time. That's so, it for time. But, but, I, but I think that pretty much wraps up my, my case. It, it does. And that's me beeping. And I, got, here we go. I can turn that off. Um, yes. So it's, um, it, I, I like this. I think it's, I think it's very nice. It's declarative and you get around it differently. You've gotten around the ability to, um, to, to the link might actually come in the background to the page in your case, but it's, it's a harmless link. You're just building a link that doesn't matter. Ah, yeah, that's, that's a, a good technique. Um, well, um, I think we did get our point across about a couple of different ways to to do this, to get these conditional links that are safe, right? And yeah. safety and security is is a huge thing. Um, it's uh, top of mind for me all the time. Um, so I really like what you did there because the other thing that it can do is you can actually, you could, for example, give a hot edit and a grayed out edit in your mm. case. Which right. I wouldn't be able to do. I have to make sure there's nothing in. Ah, so or yeah. I, maybe maybe I could. It would be difficult for me, but I like the way you did it. Um, yeah. I really do. It, I I, I want to make sure that we uh, we let folks go that that came in just for five minutes. But I have a couple more topic things on this. Why, why don't we tell everybody if you were just here for five minutes? I, I hope you got a tip. Um, yes. Beat it. Uh, ring the bell. Subscribe. I don't even. What do you, what are you subscribing to? Is that Facebook? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, it, uh, <laughs> but please, yeah, subscribe on, on YouTube, uh, on YouTube. like, okay. um, text your friends, <laughs> send yeah, them to Snapchat, it. yeah. All that, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, the, the, there was a question by Stephen Feuerstein about context switching really only be a problem when you have a lot of rows. Mm. Um, and in that one in particular, it, this is my experience, is in my test environment, my dev environment, I don't have a lot of rows, right? I've got a few. Um, but then I get some user that's got an interactive report. They've got 10,000 people and they're, they're willing to click through page after page after page. And as these interactive reports go, they, they start, they, they jettison rows off the top. And so each one of those pages becomes a little bit slower because it's got all that context switching that it, that it actually goes through and dumps out. Right. Yeah, and um, uh, that, that, that definitely speaks to me. Um, uh, perhaps uh, another advantage to your approach, Anton, could be, I, I think you might um, have uh, more fluency in building perhaps more complicated links and passing more variables uh, than in my solution. Like if I were passing more than just the ID, um, it would just, it, I think it would make for a slightly more complicated query. It might, it could be, it yeah. could be a little bit, uh a little bit bigger. I, I do like the, you know, just uh, every page has an ID and just pass one ID. That's usually my, my approach anyway, if you, right. if you can. Um, but, uh, but I think that that, I, I, I definitely uh, appreciated that dec the declarative approach. And I yeah. think it's a it's sort of a, a, a subtle extra tip in maybe in both of ours. Um, but it's that uh, the, uh, that you can use those substitution strings inside of the page link. Um, that's yes. really key. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so I guess like another counterpoint that we didn't even talk about is the much worse alternative of 
of building out uh, the HTML uh, href tags in your SQL. No, oh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely not. I mean, that is, yeah, you definitely don't want, I don't want that. Um, because if you do that, if you build, if you were to build out the whole href tag in your SQL, then you would have to make the the that column not be escaped. Yes, right? and and we don't want that. We don't want to turn off escaping. Um, so that is our um, our five minute tip plus our five minute uh, discussion about our five minute. Tip. <laughs> I think we have uh, sometimes cheated, but but the, I think the tip really did happen in five minutes. Uh, yes, I, I and I, I hope people got something out of it. Uh, yeah, please, yeah. Uh, and, and know that there are other approaches. So let us know if you have a different one. I think that is actually really interesting because. Um, I think uh, just in the, in these discussions we have, I come up with more ideas. I know oh, I could do it better in another way. Um, yeah. So, um, so I think that that uh, that was great. I, I have a I have a wisdom of the week this week um, that is uh, not exactly wisdom, but at least a, a, a highlight, um, and that is that SQL is uppercase except when it is not. Uh, this is something I've run into a fair amount lately when I've been uh, doing things like looking into user underscore objects or user underscore tables and and that kind of thing. And and I, I might pass in a, a table name um, the way I always do it. You know, my table name might be, you know, uh, my underscore person or something like that. And when I go to look it up from user underscore tables as a bind variable, oh, that's, is that mine? Oh, I bet I... Uh, I bet I was really, yeah, I didn't, I started it again or something. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, user underscore tables, when you pass it in as bind variable, the, in user underscore tables, the table name is in fact uppercase. Everything you type in SQL and PL SQL is, is truly uppercase unless, unless you put, yeah. Unless you put it in quotes. Yeah, and that's exactly. that's a really tricky one. I, 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 um, I assume, Anton, that you uh, recommend not uh, uh, putting case variation in your table names. Oh, I, I highly, I just, I just can't stand it. I, maybe that is actually the wisdom of the week. Is <laughs> keep your table names, yeah. simple table names, uppercase, put some underscores in there if you need to, you know, but don't, don't go giving me, you know, a camel case table name. <laughs> Yeah, no, that sounds like a nightmare. There's that, that SpongeBob type of typing where like some of the letters are a bit, I, I know what you're referring to, yes. Yeah, I think all tables need to be sponge bobbed. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, um, I don't see any other questions coming in, um, but I think maybe we actually had uh, an extra tip for today. Is that right? Uh, we do. It's, it's one that, that uh, is near and nearer to my heart. Um, why don't I... Um, uh, let me just uh, prepare it quickly. <laughs> Yes. I'll okay. So, so I'm going to share my screen. Beautiful. And I, I chose as my use case that let's say I'm looking up a recipe, and uh, or it could be instructions. It could be any number of things. But the, the key thing is that like I'm on my computer, and uh, I need to then suddenly be mobile and take it take this in this case to the kitchen. Uh, how do does one take a um, a website that you're on on your computer and and port it to your phone, as it were. Uh, well, I, I text it to myself, if well, if I can, or email it to myself. <laughs> okay, so uh, email is, is definitely a, a good solution because like you always have access, if you have access to the internet, you have access to email. Uh, texting harder because um, on many computers you will not have uh, access to, uh, you, won't, you won't have the facility to text. Right, right, sure. So uh, here is my solution. If you, uh, so the only technolo technological dependencies, so this has nothing to do with Chrome or Mac or whatever. The only dependency is that you have Chrome. Um, I think I said it, only do, it doesn't matter if you have PC or Mac. Uh, right. What matters <laughs> is you have Chrome. And if you um, uh, click into the URL bar, and uh, you will, uh, some options over here will expand. Uh, and I can click I've here. That. Is that a plugin? Did you add something to your browser? No, it is uh, default with the latest updates with um, uh, Chrome. Uh, and now uh, on my um, uh, phone, I can just scan the QR code and then uh, uh, voila, it's it's on my phone and I can take it with me to the kitchen. 
but that's also beautiful. Like if you want somebody, if you want to give somebody a QR code to your own website, right? You you have 2122.io. You could do that for 2122.io. That's, that's very true. Yeah. So um, an, an, an easy facility for uh, creating QR codes that you can share with people on the fly. Oh, I'm definitely going to go out to your blog. I'm going to get the QR code, print it out, and I'm going to I'm going to put it on every telephone pole. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> so you, you're going to have tons of I don't know what is it subscribers, followers, one of those things on your blog. It's going to be uh, every tree, gonna, every, yeah. every telephone pole is going to be QR code. Let's make it happen. <laughs> I think that I think the off-topic tip was as good as as good as the actual Apex tip. I, uh, it, it, it's definitely a, a tip that, that's near and dear to me. Uh, well, maybe we can get post-production. Oh, if we had a post-production budget, we could get them to swap it around and make that the tip. And make the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think we've wasted a perfectly good 15 minutes of people's time today. So yes, um, do all the things. Well, yeah. Oh. Thanks all for joining. Uh, see you guys yeah. next Friday. Yeah. Excellent. Bye-bye.